Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we are reviewing Cruising Blast for the Nintendo Switch. Now just to set the stage, this is an over-the-top, fast-paced, arcade-style racing game. It releases today, September 14th of 2021, and will be selling both on the eShop and physically for $39.99. Now we're going to be jumping right into the review, so don't forget that if you do like this content, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. And also, I really want to take a couple of seconds to thank the development team for the review copy. Now, personally, my own console experience with the Cruisin' series dates back to the Nintendo 64 with Cruisin' USA and Cruising World, which were at least at the time some of my favorite racing games. Since then, my only fresh contact with the series has come oddly enough from the actual arcades, and most recently from Cruising Blast itself that released in 2017 in arcade cabinet form. There's actually one at my local movie theater, and I would always run a few tracks either before or after my show times. So when a console release for this one was announced on the Switch, I was very excited, and had my fingers crossed for a good port. Now about three days ago I got my first run at the game, and since then I haven't stopped grinning, and even broken out my racing wheel to get the best experience. Now, Cruising Blast is seen as a reboot of the series, going back to its roots of focusing on fast-paced, over-the-top racing with tracks loosely based on real-world locations and a large variety of selectable vehicles. Now, on all these points, the Switch version truly delivers, with the five original arcade tracks available in classic mode and over 24 variations to enjoy in either single race or tour game modes. Vehicle variety is also very interesting, with over 20 vehicles ranging from high-end sports cars to fire trucks and even some crazy options like a helicopter or even a triceratops. Now, all this is tied together nicely with dynamic racing mechanics and a deep level to master. So first, let's take a look at those mechanics. You could run through a race in a very simple fashion by holding down the gas and hitting as many boost pads as possible, and at the lower difficulties, you'll get by. However, if you want to challenge the higher levels or just experience the zany action this game has on offer, you'll have to master a variety of other skills. Firstly, each vehicle has predetermined statistics, affecting the strategies to be used. Heavier vehicles will make it easier to take out your opponents, while vehicles with better boost and speed will allow you to zoom by your opponents in straightaways. Managing your boost, of which you start each race with three doses, however, more can be purchased before the start of the race, and is ultimately mapped to the ZL trigger, is very important. It can help you take out a pack of opponents by boosting into them, or get extra air over a boost pad to rather pass them over. Thirdly, you can also do a wheelie by double tapping the gas button or ZR trigger. Hitting an opponent while doing a wheelie will have you flip over them. Side wheelies are also possible by holding a direction button at the same time as double tapping. Lastly, holding ZR while taking a curve will allow you to drift and if successful will give you a boost while exiting it. Very similar to the Mario Kart mechanics in this respect. Now all this creates a very dynamic racing system where no two runs end up being the same. I did find however, especially the flipping over your opponent's mechanic to be slightly inconsistent sometimes providing an advantage and other times leading to a loss of speed upon landing where the opponent would just overtake you once again. But all in all, considering how outlandish the action becomes, the mechanics are mostly fair and quite enjoyable. Now let's take a look at the visuals. A lot of colors tending towards the neon and low polygon model designs are key here because of the lower horsepower of the Nintendo Switch. And this is what allows for everything to nonetheless look vibrant and visually appealing, catering very well to what the Switch can handle. Although it isn't all sunny skies here, where during some of the more intense action scenes, there was some pop-up, and I did get the impression that some animations were left out as not to affect the frame rate. While talking about frame rate, however, it was fairly steady, and in a fast pace like this, I rather they focus on steady FPS at the loss of some superficial animations than risk causing stuttering. 
One issue, however, when playing in handheld mode, I did encounter a slight graphical glitch where my vehicle actually disappeared for a split second. However, I was unable to reproduce this in dock mode and the issue was very minor, appearing only once or twice over about 5 hours of handheld gameplay. And it didn't really end up affecting my overall standing in those races. Hopefully, however, the developer is aware of the issue and they will be able to smooth it out in a patch. Overall, although not perfect, I still find this to be one of the most visually appealing and impressive racers on the Switch. The sound design here is also excellent, fitting in perfectly with the overall gameplay. You have a multitude of selectable tracks that you can actually cycle through mid-race with the X button. And mixed with the sound of the engines and crashes, it really gets the adrenaline flowing. I personally really love racers that allow you to select your musical tracks. Now finally, let's take a look at the overall content that is available here. So most of your single player time will most likely be spent in Cruising Tour, which is divided into six four race circuits where you are trying to obtain the overall gold trophy at the end. In the beginning, only two circuits will be available and unlocking the other four will require you to complete successfully the earlier circuits. And although a silver trophy will be enough at first, eventually you'll have to gold trophy all previous circuits to unlock the last two. This process is then repeated for three other difficulty levels, having you to unlock the circuits on each difficulty separately. You will also be collecting hidden keys throughout each race, which will be required for unlocking certain vehicles. And also receiving a cash reward at the end which will allow you to either purchase upgrades or also get access to certain other vehicles. Experience will also be awarded to the vehicle you are using, which is what allows you to purchase the upgrades based on the level of the vehicle, such as neons, decals, and even body kits. With over 20 vehicles, if you want to unlock every difficulty, purchase every vehicle, and upgrade, you will have dozens if not hundreds of hours of gameplay ahead of you. Add to that a classic arcade mode with the five original tracks as mentioned earlier and a single race or time trials mode. After that, you have a split screen multiplayer mode available for up to four people and also local wireless play if you have a friend come over with their Switch and a copy of the game. The biggest letdown and downside here is that there is no option for any online play and it really feels like a truly unfortunate oversight. Because in every other respect, you have a truly great package here. I really hope if the game is successful, the developers have left themselves a road to patch it in later. So now it's time for the verdict. And if you want to know what the rating scale I use for all my games, it's down below in the description of this video. And I'm going to be giving Cruising Blast an 8.5, putting it on the high end of a great game. It is basically now my favorite arcade racer on the Nintendo Switch for offline play and is an excellent return to form for the series. The only thing holding it back from even hitting a 9 in my opinion was the absence of that online play which will actually be maybe a really big issue for some people. At least however with the amount of content here you have a lot of single player play available to you. And at least with the availability of local wireless and split screen play, you can still enjoy this game with your friends in person. So now it's all up to you. Let me know in the comments down below if you think you'll be picking up Cruise and Blast. And don't forget on the way out that if you did like this content, to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and hit that notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.